Hi friends, this is Forrest Woolman here with the Electric Bike Report and today we're going to talk about the Denago Fat Tire e-bike. Now we did over 100 miles of riding and testing on this bike and it's got some great features which include a good sized battery, we've also got a, a torque sensor on here and a color LCD and some other nice features too. So stay with us here and we'll give you some more details about the Denago Fat Tire e-bike. Okay, a quick overview on the Denago Fat Tire e-bike. First off is the motor, great motor, Bafang 750 watt motor, provided good power acceleration. Feeding the energy to that motor is Denago's biggest battery yet, 19.2 amp hours. Did really good on the uh, distance test, more on that in a little bit. Also, the display. On previous Denago bikes, we had the mono color. This one's full color display makes it easier to read when you're riding, whether out in the sunlight or if you're in darkness. And also the uh, torque sensor, new addition also. Previous models had the cadence sensor. Torque sensor does a better job when it comes to engaging the motor with your pedaling. So that was a really nice feature. Also, the size of the bike. Most fat tire bikes come in one size, but Denago has two sizes. They've got one for small, medium size riders, 17 inch. And then you've got this one, the 19 inch frame for large and extra large riders. And so that's a really nice feature that they have too. Overall, you look, it's got a really nice integrated design. Um, and we also discovered some things using the tires and the suspension on here that was kind of a neat surprise too. Okay, now I'm gonna share with you some key specs on the Denago Fat Tire e-bike. So I mentioned before the powerful motor. This is a class three e-bike, which means you can use a throttle and get it up to 20 miles per hour, or you can pedal and with the pedal assistance, get this up to 28 miles per hour. The gearing on the bike, it's a seven speed. It's a Shimano tourney derailleur and shifter. And I liked the feature of the shifter where you have the thumb trigger to downshift and the push button to upshift. That added some really nice convenience to the ride. The handlebars, they're aluminum, made by Zoom, 700 millimeter. Narrow, usually I would think that's a little narrow for this size of bike. I would think 720 millimeter would be a better size. But this size handlebar felt good, especially when getting around some of the tight areas on the bike trail with pedestrians and other bike riders. So that worked out really well. The frame, it's aluminum. So this thing tops out at 79 pounds, which is a little bit heavier than other e-bikes, but it is a fat bike, so you gotta expect that. Another thing I liked about riding this bike were the tires, 26 inch by four inch fat tires by Kenda. And it worked good for me. I was riding out here on the, uh, on the gravel and some of the dirt parts, got really good traction, felt like I had good control, good confidence when riding. And to stop me and this bike were the brake system. They're hydraulic, dual piston, 180 millimeter rotors. And we're gonna cover that next in the brake test. So this e-bike, like all e-bikes, gets an external source of energy besides your pedaling. That's the motor. And so with that, we put a big priority on testing for brakes because that's really important for your safety. So we do a brake test on the bike to see what its braking capabilities are under extreme conditions. So we get the, in the, in the brake test, we get the bike going 20 miles per hour and then we stop suddenly. And then we measure the distance from where we activated the brakes until we came to a complete stop. We do this three times and then we come up with an average distance it took from the time we activated the brakes until it came to a complete stop. And we do it on a closed course, so it's the same course every time for every bike, so there's some measurability and consistency. And a bike like this usually is about 22 feet uh, for stopping, but this bike 
came in at 18 feet 4 inches as its average distance, which was really great. And like I mentioned before, it's got hydraulic disc brakes, uh, dual piston, 180 millimeter rotors. This thing had good consistent stopping power. I know when I took this on test rides elsewhere, um, on the downhill parts, I had some tall downhills where I was able to feather the brakes to gradually slow down. With other bikes and other brake systems, feathering doesn't quite work that well. They don't, they don't grab as well or they get hot and give out, but these brakes were consistent and I really liked that. Also, when it came to stopping for 90 degree turns, these brakes were consistent with that too. And so that's a great feature to have because when you know you can count on your brakes, you ride with more confidence and you're sure of your safety when you're riding. So here at the Electric Bike Report, we do what's called a circuit test. And now this is something that we do because we want to measure how the bike performs on real city streets when it comes to the motor engaging with the pedaling process. So it's a one mile loop that we do and there's a section where it's a 30 foot incline and it really gives us a good idea as to how consistent is the motor helping us with the pedaling process and at what point. And so we do this six times. Uh, the first lap is zero power on up to PAS1 and then we get an average speed to kind of help us gauge the difference between the different levels. Now, obviously it's a 79 pound bike, so it's a little bit heavier than a regular bike. Regular bike, I would pedal and do this course in about 12 miles per hour. On this one, it was 10 miles per hour, so a little bit difficult, because obviously it's a little bit heavier bike, it's a fat bike. When I got into PAS1, my average went from 10 miles per hour up to 11.8, so there was some consistent help I was getting from the motor, with the exception being on the incline. When I hit that incline, I definitely felt I had to pedal harder to dig it up that incline because PAS1 wasn't enough. Now when I got in the PAS2, that was different. My average speed was all the way up to 14.5 miles per hour and at PAS2 you could feel the motors engaging consistently whether you're going on flat ground or on inclines there. And so that was good because you know, you've got three more levels you're working with. And I noticed the engagement happening at about two to three miles per hour apart between the different levels of the PAS. Get the PAS4, that was the most comfortable one for a 20 mile per hour bike path. That's probably the one you're gonna to wanna to stick to because when you get into PAS5, you're gonna see a sudden jolt going from 20, 21 miles per hour up to 25, 26 miles per hour pretty quick. So you wanna watch out for that, maybe city streets, or if you're really comfortable with speed and controlling the bike, maybe you can handle that. I think most people will probably be fine just sticking at PAS4. You're going to use less battery, and overall you're still going to have a really good ride. So probably one of the things you've been thinking about when it comes to buying an e-bike is how far can I ride this thing and still get assistance from the motor? So here at Electric Bike Report, we do a range test. It's actually two tests, and what it is, we want to find out how many miles can we get out of the battery at the minimum PAS setting, that is the PAS that's providing consistent engagement from the motor with my pedaling, and then we do a maximum PAS test, that is the highest PAS setting, where it's the motor that's producing most of the power and my pedaling is producing minimum amount of power. So on the minimum PAS test, we used PAS2, and we got almost 65 miles out of this battery before it finally quit. Um, and that was pretty close to what our expectation was. On the maximum PAS test, that was PAS5, got almost 33 miles. And that also was pretty close to what we were expecting on it. A word of caution though, the level indicator. I had reached the 25th mile and the level indicator said 33%. So if you do the math, that means I should probably get at least about another 11 miles out of the battery. But instead I got about seven more miles. And we encounter this a lot with other e-bikes too, that for some reason, when you hit that 50% mark, you use up more battery quicker. And so you just wanna make sure you're monitoring the battery level and you kinda get to know your bike better and don't get caught out stranded with the battery running out before you reach your destination. But all in all, this bike met our expectations with range and we were happy with that. Now here at the Electric Bike Report, we do a hill climb test. That is, we wanna test 
a bike's ability to climb hills under extreme conditions. For our test, we use a local trail called the Hellhole Trail. Now the Hellhole Trail is a third of a mile long and it's got a 12% average incline and not all e-bikes make it to the top. There's two parts of the test. The first one is throttle only. That is from the start to the finish, we're only using the throttle to get to the top. And the second part of the test is the pedal assistance test. That is, we use the maximum pedal assistance setting and me, the rider, am providing minimal amount of pedaling to get to the top. I was happy to say that I had no doubt when doing the throttle test in this bike's ability, and I knew it was gonna get me to the top, and it did. I uh, did it in 77 seconds with an average speed of 14.1 miles per hour, which for a bike like this, that's, that's a really good test result. That was impressive. For the maximum PAS test, we used PAS-5. And again, I provided minimal amount of pedaling to get up the hill. Motor provided maximum amount of power. Made it up in 63 seconds with an average speed of 17.2 miles per hour. And I think you have to really look at the torque sensor and the role that it played with doing that. Because compared to other e-bikes that have cadence sensors, this bike did really well. Cadence sensors just measure the revolutions that the pedal is going around to determine how much power the motor should produce. But on the torque sensor, it's measuring how much pressure your feet are putting down and, and what the terrain is like as to how much uh, energy needs to come out of the motor to help with the pedaling process. And so there were points where the hill got steeper and I could feel the motor kicking in more to help me get up that part. I didn't have to push down harder on the pedal. If it was a cadence sensor, I probably would have had to push harder or I would have seen a noticeable decrease in, the, in my rate of speed going up. So all in all, the torque sensor did a great job on the hill climb. And you may never encounter hills like this in your bike riding days, but with this bike approaching hills, you know this, this bike can climb hills. So you'll ride with confidence and you should be happy with that. So rounding out everything I've talked to you today about the Denago Fat Tire e-bike. First, again, the Bafang 750 watt motor, great power as indicated in the hill climb and other tests. Also the battery, 19.2 amp hertz, good distance range to get you around. The uh, torque sensor, definitely really good on the hill climb, good engagement, whether you're riding on flat roads or hills, compared to a cadence sensor. Another thing I really like too is the LCD. It was in color, it was easier to see than the mono color that you see on other models of bikes. And uh, overall, it's got a good stylish look. Um, you could be an executive riding this thing to work or you could just be a regular urban dweller going to meet friends at the park or the beach or something like that. Um, this bike has good looks, good style, and will go, can take you just about anywhere. Um, one thing I would make a note about though, is on long rides, this seat wasn't all that comfortable for me. It was good after a couple of miles, but on the longer rides, I found that uh, my butt was kind of sore at the end. And so, so if you're like me, it might be something you want to consider a pad or a, um, maybe put a thicker seat on it. And also, um, I mentioned the PAS-5. You're going pretty fast at PAS-5, and maybe not all riders are ready for that as soon as they buy this bike. So I would think maybe in the future it'd be kind of nice if uh, maybe Denago shipped and sold this as a class two. And then as you get more experienced and comfortable with the higher speed, you can change the setting on it to make it a class three and take it up to 28 miles per hour. But all in all, I thought this was a, a really good bike. And uh, one of the things I was happy to discover too is with the uh, Zoom front suspension forks and the knobby tires, I was able to take this thing out in the dirt and ride it around kind of as a uh, little trail bike. And it was really cool. Uh, you want to remember, it's not a mountain bike, so you got to know your limitations of what you're going to ride it on. But all in all, it's a fun bike, whether you're riding it on the city streets or out on the dirt roads and the gravel trails. Um, it was really good. And I think this bike will meet, the lot, meet the needs of a lot of different riders. And coming in at, at around $2,000, you get a lot of value for your money. So I hope you found this video helpful, and if so, please click like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really helps us out. And also down below, there's links that'll take you to the current pricing for this bike 
and also the in-depth article about this e-bike. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave your comments down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. So that's it for here. I'm Forrest Woolman with the Electric Bike Report. Hope I see you out there on the trails and want to remind you, keep your hands on the bars, your feet on the pedals, and your eyes on the road, and I'll see you next time.